Randy Hicks has died twice. The first time he overdosed and doctors pulled the white sheet up over his head. The second time, Randy overdosed again. And that's when he says demons started pulling him to hell. Throughout his life, Randy Hicks' drug addiction has cost him a lot. His military career, his freedom, and his family. But when he came face to face with death, he realized there was much more at stake. My body collapsed to the ground. I felt something physically dragging me out of my body. And I mean, I looked up and I saw death and I saw hell in his eyes. Randy describes his experience on the edge of hell. Well, Randy Hicks joins us for the rest of his story. Randy, it's great to have you here. Thanks for coming. Thanks, Terry. Talk a little bit about your beginnings. You really were introduced to drugs at a very young age. Yeah, I, I had uh, walked out into the garage at my mom and dad's house. My brothers were users. And uh, so I just seen them using a large bong. I didn't know it was a bong at the time. Mm-hmm. I just know they were smoking out of it. I was interested. They offered it. How old and were you so, at the time? Oh, I was about eight years old. Wow. Yeah, wow. grade school. The curious age. Yeah, and it just kind of progressed from there. Tell me about, you, you've died twice. Tell me about the first time you died. Uh, the first time I died, I didn't realize I was dying. I was actually on the bed. They had pulled the covers up on me, and I didn't know that till the next morning. I'd woke up and looked at a sheet. They had, you know, I was moving underneath it. I realized I was strapped in. They had these leather straps on my arms and hands. They had me strapped down. And uh, I was moving. The next thing I know, all these doctors are looking around me. They're, they're Just to look on her face, you know, they were like, ah, what are you doing? <laughs> You're moving. And what I'm like, happened? Yeah, were, you, were you conscious after you, you died at that point or stopped breathing? What did you experience during that? During that time, there was really nothing. Just a darkness. Yeah, yeah, just a darkness. I didn't realize I had died till the next day, till they told me. And the doctor told me my mother was outside the room all night praying for me in the name of Jesus. He said all we could hear was that name, Jesus. You know, for a lot of people, having a near-death experience like that would have been a wake-up call. But you wound up going right back into using again. Yes. Right back into the lifestyle that you'd had before. Yes. And then down the road, you experienced another death experience. Tell us what happened. Well, what had happened was after the first time they had told me that I should have died. It was the prayers of my mother. I believe God made very clear. Um, It scared me enough to get me in church, you know, to sit in church, to be the make sure I was there every Sunday, heard the word, just never allowed the word to get in me. But at the same time, I never totally gave my life to Christ because peer pressure. Mm -hmm. Always had friends still calling you. You know, you get saved. You got to change everything, your life, your friends, everything. God wants all of us, not some of us. And I didn't give him all of me. And so I played the game. I, I, I was satisfied my flesh, not my spirit. I didn't satisfy God. I was satisfying people. Did you feel guilty? No. Yeah, you were no, just doing not at all. Thing. Yeah, because I had both going yeah. at the same time. So then what happened? Well, one day I was going through to my mother's house and walking through a middle bedroom, everything just went black. And I dropped on the ground. My body fell. I remember my hands going into the ground. Fear filled the room. I mean, Terry, it was so strong that I could feel my flesh shaking on my bones. you were high at bones. the time, right? No, oh, I was straight. I was straight. I had not used that morning. I was going to go out that night and party. And it, it just, the drugs built up over time that my heart couldn't take no more. Mm. And, but my flesh was shaking so bad and it was just a fear and I could feel my body leaving. I mean, it was like, you know how the Bible talks about you're a spirit man. Mm -hmm. Well, I got a revelation of that because I was halfway out of my body and I knew I was halfway out. When I looked down, I could see my flesh and my hands in the ground crying out for Jesus because I immediately started begging God. I said, Jesus, save me, forgive me, don't let me go to hell. I mean, everything was in me was not letting go of that carpet, but I was still getting pulled out. And I looked up behind me, and there it was. It was a a huge skull. I call it a darkness within a darkness because it's like 
You have darkness, but then there is a living darkness that had power. It had authority over me because it was dragging me out. It was this huge skull-looking thing. It had these curled horns like a ram, but it had authority over me because I, I didn't have Jesus Christ. You know? What made you cry out for help? I mean, here you'd been at church. You'd been hearing the word, whether you'd applied right. it to your life or not. Well, you know, I think sometimes things happen in our life that can scare us in the church. But we really don't commit and submit to right. God. But this time, I knew if I didn't cry out and got real, I was going to hell. Yeah. And so I cried out seriously and sincerely. And I begged God and I wept. Mm. And the peace, when I called on that name Jesus, Terry, it was so unbelievable. The peace, it was so perfect. It was, it was not earthly. It was beautiful. It's like everything was all right. Don't worry about nothing. And it felt like an angel would pick me up. And I turned and looked toward the door. It's like he turned my head toward the door. And when I did, the, my door, I could see a long, glorious white robe in the hand. I mean, it was whiter than any white. It was not earthly. It was glorious. It was, um, how can I describe it? Powerful. Yeah. It was peaceful. It was saying everything's all right. Yeah. Don't worry about it. I got you. You called on my name. I was right here. How did your and, life change after that? Oh, I went to church. I sung the songs, except this time I was reading my Bible. Yeah. I was listening to what he said. I was asking God to help me live it out in my life, to help yeah. me to understand it. You I, entered I, into I, the relationship. Oh, yes. <laughs> I pursued God reckless yeah. abandonment. I pursued God with everything within me. Mm. You know, I love the scripture that says, you'll find me when you search for me with all of your heart. Yes. You searched with all of your heart. Yes. I want folks to know that they can hear all of your story, Randy, and you can share it with your friends on social media. All you have to do to see the video story, which goes into more depth on CBN.com. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you, Terry, for having me. What story you have to share. Yeah. Yes. Pat?